Hey, welcome back. I've got another video, and this time here I'm going to be talking about Warhammer Fantasy, um, the old world as it's going to be called. Now, right now we are going on, it's got to be a year since we've had a proper update, and it's definitely making some people lose interest. GW needs to do something about this. They need to put something out, um, even if it's simply just telling us that, yeah, COVID screwed things up, it slowed things down. But here is something solid from what we've done. Um, it could be a new like turn sequence or confirmation that the turn sequence hasn't changed. It could be, you know, this is, um, you know, what the, the initial launch might look like. Just anything at this point. Give us something that's solid that shows the rules are being worked on. I don't think the rules are actually going to see that much change. I think it's going to be closer to this. Um, or even this, to be honest, both of these are quite similar. Um, there's tweaks to the rules, is my understanding, between the older editions. I vaguely remember the old rules for Lord of the Rings. I'm not familiar with the old rules for Horus Heresy, but I've been reading what people say online and watching videos. And I think both of these are a great example of the basic core rules really don't change in a lot of ways. They get some tweaks here and there. Some are good, some are not. It's really up to personal taste. But essentially, it's a recognizable return of what you're used to. And I think that's all we're going to get. Um, I don't think this is going to be a huge rewrite. This is not going to Age of Sigmar. This is not going to 8th edition thir uh, 40k. This is just going to be, here's the game back. We're going to do the minimal amount of writing and changes. We're just essentially going to make changes that make sense. Um, as they've said, they're going to take the best of the game from 3rd to 8th edition. I think that generally is just going to be things like, you know, we like spears or something uh, in this edition best, so we're going to use those rules. That, that, and that's what I mainly think is going to happen. The same with, like, heroes. Heroes are going to be, oh, we think heroes were best in, let's say, 5th um, edition. I think that was the one that was called Hero Hammer. I started in 6th edition, so I kind of missed all that. I was about, like, a year or two after they launched 6th edition I was playing. <clears throat> so I saw absolutely nothing about fifth um, ever on the table or even really being talked about until much later um, when people were kind of having like nostalgia and retrospective looks back at older editions. But I think we're just going to get essentially a box set. It's going to include a starter, uh, sorry, a core book in the starter, just like both of these games did. And it's going to include mostly older minis or mostly um or a mix of older minis and newer ones um is more likely as what i guess is guess um what i'm trying to say here lord of the rings it just basically got a bunch of old minis plus a new theoden foot and mounted sculpt and dark heresy or a dark heresy uh age of darkness it got the um the old terminators but then it also got all those new Marines, the new Contemptor, the new Spartan. So I think it's going to be somewhere in between there. Because a lot of the sculpts are still in use, like say the Empire or the Skaven, I would think Empire and um, likely uh, Chaos would be a really good example of a starter set that they could use existing kits repackaged. And that's probably what we can expect there. And I, I think the box set is probably the least interesting thing to discuss because until they come out and straight up tell me, okay, it's going to be full of Cathay, it's going to be full of new Bretonians, new Tomb Kings, whatever, I'm just going to assume that they're going to go with sort of the easy route and put in older stuff that people like, um, you know, if they want to really just make sales for the sake of sales and not for maybe uh, putting out a sensible starter set. I could totally see uh, Bretonians and Tomb Kings just because, you know, people want those models. Even if it's literally the same models, nothing new. Uh, you know, the odd, like, oh, we redid the skeletons or something. But otherwise, it's all the same models. And we just fill a box with those with a rule book. Here you go. A lot of people would buy that just because those are armies you can't buy anymore. Uh, same with orcs. A lot of orc stuff is gone, so put the older orcs back in, the older dwarves. People would buy it, but I do think it's going to be Empire because they are current existing models that look fine. 
and probably something again like Skaven or Chaos because they have existing model ranges that look fine. And yeah, that, that's going to be the starter set. But the armies, that's where um, the real question is. And I think a lot of people, um, when I do see people talking about this, I don't know why, but they seem to keep thinking, at least some people do, and less and less now because of this now, having two releases that sort of go this route. But some people still seem to think we're going to get like a trickle of codexes or something or army books. And I don't think that's likely. I think the beginning of it is going to be a book like these. I think it will be closer to this one just because of size, because selling this for $85, uh, I'm sure it'll be $90 by then if not 100 versus this for like 60 or 70 um, I doubt there's that much work really to just stretch it out to this size. <clears throat> Again, just like the core rules, I think most of the army rules are going to just be the 8th edition codexes copy-pasted into a new book with some tweaks. New special rules... Uh, special rules that are invalid being removed, maybe some new or slightly variant uh, stat lines, things like that. But overall, I think we're just going to get the same stuff, and they're going to be able to copy-paste, grab a few of the old um, lore sections. You know, here's your timeline that's essentially not changed, other than it stops at this year, like, whatever it is. Like, it, it's going to be set a couple hundred years before... Um, the last years of 8th edition were set, like the 20, what was that, 25, 25 or something like that. Um, I think they're going to just go back a couple hundred years and just be like, oh yeah, and this is where we're at. Um, you know, it sort of ends around the time of the Vampire Wars type thing. And that'll be the lore section. Here's like a little bit about this army and their history. And then we'll get a few pages of what they look like uh, each unit that's available or going to be coming back. I do think we'll also see old kits um, just coming back, reboxed. The molds are not destroyed. I don't believe for a second that any of the, the Tomb Kings or Bretonians or anything were destroyed. Um, that would be really poor business practice because you never know, like, like this situation, when you might want that stuff back. Um, you know, it'd be like when Coke went over to New Coke and then they went back to Coke Classic. Is it If they had just destroyed the recipe for Coke Classic and then just made sure they could never redo it, that wouldn't have made sense. The molds exist. Um, yes, they're large and they're going to need refreshing, but they're gonna just, they were just put away in storage, I'm certain. So they'll be breaking those out. They'll be reboxing. And they're going to sell us a book for, let's say, 100 bucks Canadian that's going to have... 350 pages, similar to this, and each army in that 350 pages, they're going to get a certain amount of it, just set aside for that. Um, plus there's going to be um, like an intro section, which I think is also why um, you're going to instead see two of them, like uh, Horus Heresy has. I think there were two for Lord of the Rings. I think The Hobbit has its own book, but um, I never had a Hobbit, a Hobbit army, so I never really bothered looking past Middle Earth. I did have some Middle Earth stuff kind of prior. So when this came out, I just needed this one book. It cost me like 60 or 70, whatever it was. And it had all the army lists. And, you know, I played this for X many years before I just like totally walked away, sold all my stuff, just kept the books in case. This one here, I only bought Hereticus. I didn't need the uh, Loyalist book. Because I'm not buying a Loyalist army. I don't intend to. I'm not going to start a second army, most likely. And if I do, well, then I'll get it later. It's not a big deal. So, I think right now, if you were to take this and break it down by 17 armies, um, which is, I think, where um, we'd be. It's like 14 or 15 that exists now. And I think you could assume two or three extras could be added, like Cafe kislev and you know something else but giving them each uh 20 pages would fill this up so i think 20 pages is a little bit light because you're going to want uh lore you're going to want you know some painting tips and some 
finished models in the showcase and then you're going to want the the army rules and the, the you know the magic items things like that which is why i think they'll split it i think it'll be two books it'll, it, i don't know if the, how they'll do it they might just call it like volume a and volume b split them sort of like randomly but like you know one has like empire and dwarves and dark elves and chaos or whatever maybe so it's mixed up or they might try to do it like some sort of split that's closer to good versus evil but that's hard in warhammer so i i think a volume a and volume b with just sort of a mix is fairly likely that way there they can also get you to buy two books more easily if you own a couple of armies it's more likely that just scattering them and just picking which book they go into at random would make it more likely you would need both and you know at 85 dollars for this let's assume that you know it goes up to 90 by then that's 180 bucks that they can get us to buy on and we know gw they like to sell books books make them a lot of money and a lot of people myself included will look at it and go ah that sucks but you know i need both books i'll, I'll just spend the money i'm going to spend it up front that's almost 200 bucks right there i assume i'm going to buy the starter set and not wait for the solo book because you know you look at the uh the, the starter set for horse heresy and yeah it's just it's way better uh to just get the box set in my opinion because you get all those models and it's going to be the same thing you're going to get a bunch of models and it's just it's just going to be a big purchase day one for people who want to get invested and i think that horse heresy is sort of the the nail in the coffin for anyone who's still on the fence about how they're going to release this it's now just a question of will they follow through has the game quietly been canceled and when are we going to see it so i'm just going to stop there because i'm just going to keep repeating the same things over and over so if you have any thoughts about what i'm saying here you know tell me like am i right am i wrong do you think that you know this doesn't you know this is never going to happen anyways do you not care about this game me personally i do a lot but uh i want to hear from you and if you have any thoughts or ideas let me know and as always have a great day